there's a lot of things that are happening right now in North Texas, and there's definitely a lot of momentum, what I am seeing from my point of view. So let's go right ahead and talk about the first question is, I wanna talk to each of you about what do you all think are the issues that are facing your respective districts and counties, and, and what can we do about them as a Texas Democratic Party? I, I'm going to start off with the big A word, apathy. Um, we've all heard it in all parts of Texas. Um, when I ran for judge, it was a word that I hated to hear. Um, and now as chair, the, the word continues. But ultimately, I think it's not necessarily apathy. It is um, a failure to connect. And I think that it is incumbent upon the party chairs to make sure that we are creating get out the vote atmospheres that represent and can connect to the demographic of voters that we're interested in getting to the polls. And so making sure that the messaging um, flows across all demographics is key. And I believe that that would definitely and certainly help with ensuring that we can alleviate the word of apathy and, and, and turn that into engagement across the board. Uh, so in Collin County, we have a lot. <laughs> of mess happening. We are a county that is sixth largest in population, um, wealthiest county, um, yet you see zero representation from other than one party. Um, we were fortunate though, this last cycle to get one Democrat, one Democrat was elected and we are thrilled and over the moon, but we need more. So there's a lot of frustration in Collin County because we know that more is possible I would agree with what Crystal has, has mentioned, that apathy is there. And I think most of that apathy is because people just don't see themselves represented or they don't see anyone who cares about their issues. So that's that's one of the things we're trying to change here, uh, trying to make sure that we give people a reason to come out and vote. In Denton County, we really just need to start getting more people registered. I think a biggest problem we have for all of us is, is um, the gerrymandering. We're gerrymandered within our district. And people don't understand that that's like a completely real thing and that kills their motivation. But the thing is, in order to move forward, all we have is to try to get a high level of people registered. That is how states flip. That's how Georgia flipped. Um, and that's what that's what we're focusing on in Denton County for when we have the opportunity to affect that gerrymandering. I'd, I'd agree with the apathy piece. Uh, but I'll add to the point to the point that uh, I think apathy for us here in Dallas County is connected to uh, individuals not really understanding how policy affects their day to day lives or how voting affects their day to day lives. And so that's kind of the challenge that we want to focus on here is uh, the voter education piece, uh, shrinking the gap between the, the voter and the elected official or the voter and the candidate and making sure that they are uh, communicating as often as possible. Um, in, in a way that makes sense for everybody that we're not using some um, some lofty language and talking to voters exactly how they can receive information, uh, specifically in their own languages. If, if we're talking about um, uh, bilingual individuals or individuals who are English is not their first language. So shrinking that gap, um, I think those kind of things uh, decrease apathy when we let people know that we are human. Uh, we are we, we live in the district. We live right around the corner from you. Uh, so just kind of humanizing ourselves and then shrinking the gap between the candidates, elected officials and the voters. One thing I did notice that was happening in Georgia is that Georgia put together language teams. And so they had actually had teams that went out there and just canvassed. So um, do we see any type of organization happening on that level yet? We do here here in uh, Dallas County. I think that's going to spread out throughout North Texas, talking about language justice and language equity. Uh, but beyond that, not just uh, Engl English as a second language, uh, but I think we can't ignore the fact that these uh, four county chairs here are, are Black, right? And there's even talking to people who English is their first language and being able to center a message around their cultural experience and their day-to-day -day life. And so uh, that's what we talk about when we talk about shrinking the gap and talking to people in a way that makes the most sense. Talk about how unique it is to have you four chairs in positions such as yourself right now during during this time in history. We get the benefit of being able to stand before um, crowds of persons who can identify with what we say simply by the way that we look. 
And if the message is, we need you to get out and vote, and we need to vote for this particular reason, and if it's easier for me to be able to say it and get out the vote, then I think we just use it for our benefit. The fact that we've been able to do that um, or are looking forward to do that collectively as a team in contiguous counties only adds to why we're all here. And why we're all here is in an effort to figure out how we can galvanize and work together to get out the vote. I would just say, um, back to, to Crystal's point about the fear uh, and Delia's point about the gerrymandering, um, they can't gerrymander this. So this opportunity that is before us, we are taking control, back control of what should have already been done had they left the maps the way the geography and the demographics are. I think Sheena just hit on something real key. Uh, beyond everything that we've already talked about, she said, keep that same energy. The thing I'm most encouraged about working with this group and just you know spreading our message throughout North Texas and Texas as a whole is the energy that uh, these ladies bring, right? The energy that they bring to their different counties, the experience, right? We're not just talking about how we look, but we talk about our experience, uh, being professionals, coming to this space, bringing that uh, professional uh, 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 way of operating to our county parties, professionalizing our county parties, understanding how to run a 365 uh, orga uh, professional organization, having the staff and, and volunteers and super volunteers that we need to be able to execute in 2024, right? Uh, I've watched them all be able to, to transform their parties in just a short amount of time. And I think that's the energy that I'm most excited about. And I think that people will talk about as we move into 2024. Let's talk about the stuff that you all are doing next. Like, how are you all working together? How do you see the collaboration working between your groups? I think to answer your question, though, what are we doing? We're showing up for each other. First and foremost, we're showing up for each other, right? Um, to know that you have allies, not only in your county, but in your contiguous counties. Persons who look like you, that understand you, that understand the day-to-day, -day, that understands the grind, the struggle, and the hustle. So we show up in Denton. We show up in Collin. We show up in Dallas County on a Thursday night, knowing you have to be in court the next morning. And we're putting forth what we want to see from those who support our party. And that is simply working together, setting aside whatever differences that you may have. Someone stepped on your toes two years ago. Someone ran for your precinct chair seat and they won. Whatever it was that caused you to be off with your party, setting that aside and working forward towards the greater good is, is the message that we're putting forth right now. And that's just showing up for everybody for in, and everyone. Um, so I just wanna know, how are you all going to go start invigorating your county parties and getting everyone to the to the table. You know, it's funny so, you say that. So I keep saying, come back to the party, come back to the party, because we need you. We need you. Our our county is so diverse, but the party is still not as diverse as the community. So how do we ensure that those people feel welcome? I think it's to Cardall's point. We have to start meeting them where they are, speaking their language, and not just expecting them to come to us. We need to go to them. Cardell, how are, how are things going in Dallas? We're feeling great. And we're having conversations with other county chairs around the state, right? Not only are we talking to uh, county chairs around the state, we're also talking to the Texas Democratic Party, right? So we're talking to our, to, to our labor partners. So this is a message that we, we've been using the language about uh, partnership. Right. So as we partner and, and we, we resource, share and share information and best strategies and ideas with each other, there are more people uh, coming to the table, uh, being added to the fold every day. And I think that's the most um, promising thing that we're seeing as a group, but not only here in Dallas County, but just in North Texas as a whole. And so if Rockwall and Denton and Taryn and Colin and Ellis, if we all get together, uh, North Texas will be on lock pretty soon. And so then we'll be making our way down I-45, down I-35, and talking to our other partners. So we're excited about what's happening here in Dallas County. Uh, and it's just a reflection of what's happening here in North Texas. What are you all doing to energize your counties? How are you all working together? What are your plans for collaboration like? The, the word for 2023 has been engagement because we want to engage our voters before we start asking for votes. So we've been doing things around the county just to, to increase putting more tools in the hands of our precinct chairs. So we've been on a very aggressive building up our precinct chair spots. But when you're engaging 
and you get your precinct chairs out there doing what they what they need to do, that type of energy you can't beat. So we're we're engaging around the county to try to come out the closet. We met in places that are highly Republican and we had the biggest turnout. So we've got to increase our engagement so people know that we're here and we're moving forward. And and I can tell you from the way the other side is moving, they're paying attention. You mentioned something that I was going to ask about and, and you just mentioned it grassroots. So what can you all do as county chairs to further engage the grassroots and start working together? We've created uh, what we call a community council. And that's just a uh, a council that's filled with all allied organizations, right? Um, so depending on your, your different um, advocacy issue. And so this group meets once a month and we listen. We, we let them talk to us about what events they have coming up, what protests they have coming up, uh, what what community uh, organizing events they have coming up, how the party can plug into what what they have going on. And then we also share opportunities where where the party's hosting events and that we want to collaborate with them where they can, seeing that most of them are, are, are 501c3s, right? And so making sure that we are having that kind of communication because we know during uh, GOTV, most of them are out uh, knocking doors, doing lit drop, communicating with voters in some form, um, not only just until we get to GOTV, they're already doing what, what Delia talks about is engagement year round, right? And so on their different advocacy uh, points and advocacy issues. So we don't have to do all of this expensive message testing and polling. We already know through the community council, people who are working with folks every day, what the community needs. And so that's kind of a model that we've taken. It's, it's, it's uh, uh, some of our social justice groups, it's, it's labor, uh, it's abortion rights advocacy. It's, you know, some of everybody, right? Um, and we, we take that group and we take their, their, their thoughts and their consensus and we try to build it into what we do every day. That's something that I want to build out throughout North Texas, specifically with this group, but then also implement throughout our county chairs as well. I know that every county looks different. They may not have as many allies uh, when, when we go to certain counties, but they can use the strength of, of what we have here in North Texas. And we're willing to take that on the road. We cannot overlook how important it is to get our Gen Zers involved. And um, we're Tarrant County Democratic Party right now is working on a strategy in order to make sure that we capitalize on that interest and on that vote. Because I truly believe that once we can get that powerful voice engaged, it, we, we are unstoppable. And so, um, I, but I don't wanna go too far off, off the question, Whatever the group is, whatever the entity is, we are working hand in hand and look forward to working hand in hand in partnership collaborations with them all. Let's talk a little tiny bit about the opportunities we have right now in North Texas, because the Republican Party is a mess. And a lot of the mess where they're at in Texas is North Texas. I mean, that this is Ken Paxton country and who knows what's going on there with the Republican Party? There's so many different fractions. I can't even keep them straight, but they're all, you know, primarying each other and they're just, they're all fighting up there. So let's let them fight, but let's see what opportunities does, does the fact that they're such a mess create for Democrats right now in North Texas? One thing we're going to do is 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 reach is do more of a faith reach out because we don't really have that space in the Democratic Party, and so we're asking: Does your politics align with your faith? Because we want those Republicans who are sitting around, understanding that their party has collapsed, and the more extreme they get, the more exciting it is to consider to being a Democrat. But on this side, we're actually the ones, no matter what your faith is, we're actually the ones that are aligned more with it. It doesn't matter what your faith is, that the root of all of it is compassion. And their policies are not compassionate. So if you ask what would Jesus do, he would not put a bale of barbed wire in the Gulf to drown desperate people. But yet you have people who believe that their faith aligns with that party because that's what they're being told. So I think it creates an opportunity for better messaging and to show how how um, which will create more space at the table to show that their their faith actually does not align with the policies and the extreme um, primary voters that come out of the Republican Party. And I hope that people look at this and say, you know what, this may be the time to run for office because in November, you never know what they may do. And it may discourage people from 
just voting that red ticket because of what they're doing. So I think it creates a lot of opportunity. Going back a little bit earlier, talked about what we're doing for the, the youth vote and getting out the vote. I think it also starts with candidates, right? Um, and, and, and voters being able to see candidates that they identify with. We see here in a number of our house districts, our candidates are getting a lot younger. I mean, I'm talking Gen Z, uh, Gen Z all the way up to millennial. Uh, and so we're seeing that and then they're active on TikTok and Twitter and everything else, Instagram. And so when you start to have that diversity of candidate, the diversity in the candidate pool, that gets certain voters attention uh, who probably wouldn't have been in the process with us otherwise. Right. Or who are what we call infrequent voters uh, or uh, inconsistent voters, however you want to name it. Um, yeah, candidate selection and them stepping up to say, hey, I want to be a part of this process and I am proud to be a Democrat. Right. Um, I think that matters and that helps us close the gap, too. So I'm excited about that. How can we help you and get the word out about how we can support the, you know, amazing team that you all have there in North Texas? Tarrant County Democratic Party's office is a get out the vote effort. Will we register voters? Absolutely. Are we wanting more volunteers? Absolutely. Do we need more precinct chairs? Absolutely. But our primary focus is getting those people who are already registered to vote to the poll. However, in order to do so, we have to raise funds in order to do so. Unless Tarrant County is going to get out and go knock on doors and make phone calls, we have to raise the funds so we can hire entities and sources in order to get that done for us. And so that's just the reality of what the Tarrant County Democratic Party is facing. We have the votes. How do we pull them away from their couches? How do we pull them away from the football games and all the other things that occupy our minds and get them to the polls for... A, 15 minutes or so. And so for the for Tarrant County, we are doing what we can to get out the vote. That way, people are more engaged in supporting the party when we win. I know how that works. It's like, why do I support and y'all ain't winning? Well, y'all, we can't win unless we get the support. So um, yes, and Democrats deliver. That's our new message. Thank you, Candace. Democrats deliver. Absolutely. Cardall, do you want to, you have anything to add in there? I think that question, Crystal, gets asked just not only of us, but around the state, you know, what is the party doing? And if, if you identify as a Democrat, you're a member of the party, right? You have a Jersey, you can get in the game, you can do something. And so we say that amongst each, uh, each other as chairs and, and, and also make sure that we are encouraging um, individuals who identify as Democrats and voters alike to get involved and to step up and provide a solution as well, right? So we're providing strategy and organization uh, to, these, to, these, to these groups but it's incumbent upon all of us to, to, to do something, right? Whether you are uh, a staunch Democrat, whether you are a part of the allied organization and you, and you share our values, right? That there's something for everybody to do. So I think this is gonna be a great year in 2024. Uh, coming up in 2024, I think we've already started doing the work in 23. So I'm just excited to be a part of this, this group. Uh, and, and then with allied organizations like yours, Nancy, right? You have been, uh, waving the flag as far as getting the message out with your commercials. We share some of your ads here in Dallas County. So the more that we collaborate and work together, and then we'll all have a chance to work together during the 2024 uh, uh, coordinated campaign. That's something that every Democrat and every allied organization can, can participate in. And so if we want to start to see uh, a statewide win or move towards a statewide victory, I know we've had some, some tough days in the past, uh, but we, that's when we collaborate and we share information and we share data and resources and share talking points. And how do we, how does this message play best in Dallas? How does this message play best in rural Texas, right? When we share that kind of information, I think we get closer to the goal. So I'm, I'm inspired and encouraged by uh, what this group means for not only North Texas, but all of us in Texas. I agree with that. Thank you so much. Um, so everyone who is listening to this right now, I want to tell you all that we need to be proud of being Democrats. I want you all to buy the Democratic t-shirt. I want to see you in a Tarrant County t-shirt and Dallas County t-shirt, you know, uh, Denton County and Collin County and show off that you are a proud Democrat and that you live in your neighborhood and you're a proud Democrat that lives there in your community. It's so important. Second thing is, is that we all need to donate to our local county parties. 
we all need to and it needs to be something that we all commit to doing even if it just means that you give up starbucks one day a week i mean that's six bucks and that, that adds up that really really does and you can do that so we need to support our local parties also when you show up everybody who's listening to this call when you show up and let's say you like to volunteer at a food kitchen and you like to volunteer to help out in certain things you all need to show up in, as Democrats, you need to show up in your Democratic t-shirts because the thing is, is that so many people think all these terrible things about Democrats, but what they don't know about Democrats is that we're fun and we have the heart. We have heart, we care about people and we have to show up as our authentic selves. And those are people that care about their community. And you have to show up as your authentic self and wear that t-shirt and show up as Democrats, wherever you go, where you volunteer, where you help out when you're, you know, just, you know, cleaning your front yard and mowing the lawn and somebody sees you in your democratic shirt, we have to start showing up. So it's so important. And um, last of all is that I just, I really want to thank Crystal and Delia and Sheena and Cardell. Just thank you all so much for joining us tonight and letting us into into your counties and giving, some, giving us a little bit of insight on the energy that is happening in North Texas with really, honestly, the fabulous four, which is the four of you. You guys are just fantastic. And I just feel so honored today that we are able to host you all on this really important conversation because I do believe that when we change the hearts and minds in Texas and we're able to, you know, turn Texas blue, I think that the story of North Texas is going to be the leading story that helps us get there. So thank you all so much for your time tonight. I really appreciate all of you.